Hey guys, it's DJ with another episode of Pro Wrestling Straight Shooter. I've got my co-host Rob Bonnet here with me. Uh, we're going to jump right in and we're kind of a little bit behind the times here because we got such a late start with this channel and these videos. I want to talk about the uh, John Moxley, formerly known as Dean Ambrose situation. Obviously on my channel, you know, the Pro Wrestling Straight Shooter, I did a video when news first broke that you know, Dean Ambrose was not renewing his WWE contract. And, you know, I kind of set up front, I was like, I'll believe it when he shows up somewhere else. Bam, he showed up somewhere else. And, you know, he's John Moxley again. And not a big deal. And again, I'll go into my opinions on that a little bit more. What I want to pick apart here with Rob is the, the podcast that he did. And he's done a couple of podcasts now since he's you know, showed up at the All Elite pay-per-view here a couple weeks ago, had a lot of things to say about his last year in the WWE and, you know, gave his perspective. And I'd kind of like to pick that apart about a little bit and give you some of my personal perspective, as well as, you know, some things that I'm sure Rob has to say about it here. So go ahead and take over, Rob. All right, so uh, as you guys know, if you're following any of this stuff, he showed up at yeah, Double or Nothing. He got into it with Kenny Omega. And so he's done these, and since then he's done, he did the Jericho podcast and he did the uh, Wade Keller one. And like the biggest thing he went on about there, at least from where I'm sitting, was this, how he just hated the creative process in WWE. And, you know, he didn't, you know, he took a big dump all over it, which, you know, and I mean, a lot of people that we talk to on Twitter and whatnot have, and a lot of the podcasters and stuff have been going on about that for a while. But, you know, it's, to me, it wasn't a real big revelation. We've known for a long time that Vince has the final say on whatever goes on TV. So, to me, it wasn't some big revelation, but a lot of people treated it like it was. And, you know, a lot of people you know, felt like they got some type of vindication out of him coming out and saying all of this. And I guess, you know, my take on it is, okay, they have a certain way of doing things. He didn't like it because he had a specific way he wanted to do his character, his promos, and et cetera. And they wouldn't let him do that because they, particularly Vince, had their own ideas about what would be best to do with him there. And I mean, my opinion is, when you look at how successful The Shield was, when you look at how successful he was as a solo act there, that you can't really say they made the wrong decision, whether he liked doing it or not. You know, they did, you know, as Triple H would say, what's best for business. They made a whole lot of money off the shield. They made a whole lot of money off of Dean Ambrose, the solo act. So you, whether he liked it, doing it or not, to me, they made the right decision. Um, it's, you know, and I feel bad for him that he couldn't, you know, find a way to be happy with it. And, I mean, that, and that sucks. I mean, when you don't like what you're doing at your job and there's no way of getting to do what you do want to do, then look, that sucks. Anybody who's been on a job will tell you that that stinks. Yeah. You. And that's so, a, go, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'll let you finish your thought. So I won't begrudge him for not being happy. I won't begrudge him for leaving when he got a chance. Um, but, you know, you go, DJ, I just say there's some just kind of things underneath the surface that I think. Um, where he's kind of, you know, kind of milking the crowd here a little bit, if you ask me. Yeah, there's definitely, you know, there's definitely a bit of, um, if we want to use the word kayfabe going on here, and I truly believe that. And like you, I, I was a big, big Dean Ambrose fan. I mean, of The Shield, he kind of broke out and became mainly be because of the character and the way he came out with the character. He, um... I gravitated towards him. I like Roman Reigns. I still like Roman Reigns. I like Seth Rollins very much. But Dean Ambrose was the guy that, that me personally, you know, he, he latched onto me after the Shield kind of split up for a little while. So it, personally, I'm sad to see him go as the Dean Ambrose character. Um, I think a lot of people are going to be disappointed. Um, I don't think they're going to get back the John Moxley that they lost, not to the degree that um, that, that that he left behind when he went to, I think it was uh, FCW at the time, which eventually became NXT. Um, I, I don't think they're getting that John Moxley back. I think you'll see bits and pieces of it, but he's married now. He's got a lot going on outside of wrestling that would prohibit him, I would think, from putting on those bloodbath matches that everybody, you know, the, the, you know, the, everybody came to know him for. Um, again, like you said, I don't begrudge him at all, man. If you're not happy at work <clears throat> and, and, and 
you've gotten to the point where going to work is like walking the green mile. It, it, you absolutely need to get out of there. And for him, if it was better for his mental health to get out of there, absolutely, man. Kudos. Do what you need to do. Do you. But to your point, when you work for a company, and I'll use myself as a pers in perspective here, I work for a company that I've been with for um, about seven years now. I've been in you know, my line of work for 20. I've been with that company for 70. And every single day, I see something where I'm just like, I grit my teeth. I, why are you doing it that way? Why can't we do it this way? I got to either walk away or close myself in a room and take a deep breath because I look at it and I see it. And to me, it looks wrong. But again, like you said, the company's still making money. So who's wrong? Me or the company? The answer is nobody's wrong. You know, WWE has a, a certain pattern and way of doing things, and it's obviously very, very successful. They're a you know billion dollar company, so you know you can't really look at what they're doing as creatively wrong, even when there's a certain portion of the fan base that may not like it, and the wrestler himself may not like it. But he's not vibing with it, man. It's time to go. It's time to move on. And like you said, I'm I'm sad about that as a fan. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll see what he does as John Moxley. Personally, I think it's going to be a mix of Dean Ambrose, you know, with some John Moxley thrown in there under the John Moxley name. So. Same. Now. So, I, like me, I'm, I'm not big into the whole the death match stuff. I don't watch any of that. I never saw any of that stuff with him before. So, you know, when I, when I hear all the things like, oh, you, you, know, you don't know how good he can really be, and like, well, I don't care to see people getting smashed in the head with light tubes and all that stuff, so, you know, I, that, you know, he enjoyed doing it before, that's great, um, I'm not going to go dig up the little videos of him to see, you know, what he was really like <laughs> before. Yeah, I, I dug up one or two just to see, because I had to know, and it wasn't, I mean, it was gory if you like the gore, but it was not, to me, it wasn't impressive. Okay, and, and I'm at, I mean, I'm at the point now where I don't care to see blood in wrestling matches. I, I saw plenty of that back in the 80s with Dusty and Ric Flair and all that stuff. I don't even see guys getting smashed in the head and bleeding all over the place. It doesn't do anything for me anymore. Um, and honestly, those guys back then are really fortunate that they didn't die from God knows what kind of blood diseases you could have gotten doing all that stuff. Right. I don't, I don't even see that. Yeah. I didn't know. So, um, you know, somebody gets... Bust open hard way during the match. You know, that's fine. It happens. You know, I'm not going to recoil from my TV if that happens. Right. You know, I'm going to. I don't want to see anybody. You know, digging in their shorts with a razor blade anymore. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't need to see that anymore. That you know, man, honestly, that doesn't that doesn't add anything to it to me anymore. And I mean, one time it was like, oh, that's really cool, and then, you know, but no, I mean, no. So I mean. He's not going to, I don't think he's going to be doing that now, and he's especially not going to be doing that once they get on TV, because they're going to be on TNT probably, and they're going to have the same issues that WCW had when they were on TNT, and, and, and couldn't show yeah, there's going to be definitely a standards and practices. And again, this is something we can kind of pick apart more in a separate All Elite Wrestling video. Um, I, I, again, I think it's going to be very polarizing once the rubber meets the road and uh, you know they get on TV on a regular basis. You're going to really see what All Elite is really going to end up being all about. Not this fantasy vision that you know their, their, their hardcore built-in fan base has already got. 